Reliance Commercial Finance presents India SME Forum 2012. Find out the secrets of success in a series of seminars exclusively for smart entrepreneurs. Join India's biggest SME initiative to boost your business and celebrate SME achievers with India SME 100 Award. Somewhere there, there has to be a clear 
and a strong value proposition, what we call as USP. Calling some, stating something which everybody knows, but that's not promise. I'll not say something which nobody knows. Create, I think, creating a strong, simple value proposition that why should somebody buy this product and why should they buy it from you? A strong reason. And when you, and you know, you know, you, you all double up as sales, uh, as you say, old sales force and marketers, you know what that is going to be. So a strong value proposition written down which will help you, you know, in, in the rest of your communication. Because this is really the first step. It's a very important step. It's a very important step to creating a brand. And if this does not exist, the rest of the effort do not actually have a, a, any heavy meaning. The other thing is about customer experience and the ownership of that. It's very common, right? All of us um, get these calls for, from credit card companies, right? So somebody calls you, and at uh, you know about 10 o'clock in the morning, on a Monday morning, and they said, we want a credit card. So the, it happened the other day. Somebody called me from a bank and said, I was so furious because I was just getting into the meeting. How can you call me at 10 o'clock on, you know, uh, on, a, on a Monday morning and I tried to see whether I need a credit card? So he just looked at me and the, the girl from the outside said, Sir, you are so angry. You have to phone me. You have to call me. You have to this is, this is how it is. So, but by chance you say, yes, that yes, I want a credit card. And then starts your audit. Because there is no one person who is owning the customer relationship. And the larger the company, the bigger the company, the more complex the organization, the more are the chances of growing. But here is where I feel SMEs really, really have an opportunity to make a difference. Because you, as people who have a, a, a finite set and complete visibility to your customer set, it's a great opportunity to build a, you know, a full-fledged customer experience. See, again, customer experience don't, doesn't have to be an esoteric experience theater that you create to showcase your product. But the whole experience, right from the time people come and talk to you, to the time that they buy your product and later, has to be an integrated experience. A large company really struggled to do this because of the complexity of their own organization. Some of it is uh, self-created, some of it is actually very general, you can't do anything about it. But here is uh, a great opportunity, because whatever about your value proposition that you created can be carried throughout, throughout your experience. Again, demonstrate thy value as I say, right? Whatever about the value proposition, is there a way you are able to demonstrate that? Are you able to say, look, you create a value. Let's say you buy your product and you know this is going to save you so much of electricity. Let's say your product is, is in that area. Or it could be which guarantees a higher level of productivity. Is there a way you can very overtly demonstrate that on day one? It's an immediate effect. It's an immediate benefit that you are creating for your customers. Now this is not something that every company can do. And this again is something that, that uh, you can do by, by, by thinking of manners of actually demonstrating, saying, look, if you buy this product, this is how it works. And here are the games of it. Something like a trial period, I don't know, there are many ways of doing it, but this is one thing that one can try. We can again talk about it building lasting relationships. Because clearly, if you see, even in the IT uh, space, 95% of non, all new revenue for any company, big, small, and large, comes from existing customers. So if you are able to build long-lasting relationships, and I'll come to a few uh, areas after this about how we, these relationships can be built, this can be really part breaking Because your first set of 50 customers, or 30 customers, are people who are going to be your brand ambassadors to take you to the next level. I think what grossly ignored branding tool, and we talked about so many areas of branding, is your own sales force. You have maybe one, two, three, four, five, I don't know how many people who are in your sales team. They are the people who are going to talk, they are talking to your customer, they are the people who are going to talk to your prospects. Right? So the first idea about your company is actually being that Nikhil said about the existing card, right? Is coming from the sales team. So one can put whatever they want on a website, but if that is not corresponding to that individual, that human being who is in front of you, 
this whole effort becomes a waste. Because he has to demonstrate that to the, uh, to the customer, to the prospect. So ensure that your sales force is well trained on carrying forward your brand. How do you do that? We you know, look at so many things, but there is a zero cost method of doing it, which is creating a small sales kit. It costs nothing to create a small sales kit. If you want to create a soft copy, the cost is actually zero. A what is a sales kit? A sales kit is very simple. It's got what is called an elevator pitch. I'm sure all of you have heard about it. An elevator pitch is if you are with a customer in an elevator and spending the next close to 90 seconds with that person in the elevator, what are you going to talk about your product and your company? So that can be a one slider, just a one slider presentation about what your products are, what are your company, what is the benefit to the customer. Then it also has more elaborate methods, like for example, if you if you have more time with the customer, let's say you have half an hour, so you have a 10 slider, you have a 15 slider presentation. So there's a presentation part of it. The other thing which is very interesting and you may want to do it, the sales people are generally not great at you know reading a lot of content and then assimilating it. They, they get up more to talk to the customer, putting a put a pricing list in front of them and you know go straight away. So you give them reams and reams of material, they, they're not going to read it. They will just look at how to close uh, a deal, right? So there's a simple method. There's something called an audio tape. Just a three minute audio, which somebody can plug into his car, a salesperson can plug into his car as he's driving for a sales meeting. So he's going to meet a customer. This sales kit can be a CD, which he can put inside his car, and keep listening to it as he goes. So all the things that you want him to have top of mind for this particular product will come to him at that point in time because he's never edited anything. So he's going to come straight to a pricing discussion, which is not a good thing. So have the sales kit, and of course, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just posting an article uh, on, on, the, on the website uh, which has all these details because I don't want to take too much time here. Okay, there are, there are people called SMEs. Now, now this SMEs are different. They are not. Uh, they, SME here is a subject matter expert, right? All of us have subject matter experts and we never expose them to sales teams because they feel, we feel they're technical people and they should not be involved in this. That's, I think overall, uh, it, it, it can be a little underproductive because these are the people who have created your products. These are the people who are the backbone of your company. They are the people who will also be interacting with customers later on. So get them into the sales cycle as soon as possible. Building a strong thought leadership program, again, on your website, on, on any other collateral that you share with the customers. What are you talking about your, about your company? It was established in the year so and so, you know, it is in this particular area, this is the headcount, this is the number of people, or this is the machinery that we have. You know, this is, this is only one part of it. But over and above that, what are the domain expertise that you are able to give? For example, how many customers have you worked with? These are things that, that add up to our thought leadership program, right? And that is becoming extremely important in, in, in a cluttered marketplace. Because everybody saying the same thing. If you say you have land worth, you know, one and a half acres of land, somebody has got three acres. So what do you make out of it? It doesn't tell the customer anything about you. But somewhere, then you can demonstrate that you know the domain. Let's say you are in one particular domain. You are a medical equipment manufacturer. You have to, you know, sort of demonstrate that you have thought leadership in that particular area. Now we talked about relationship. One simple tip that can be used is to form a customer advisory board. How many of you have customers sitting on your advisory board or an advisory council or something like that? Anyone? Fantastic. One, two. That's great. But tell me what stops the others? Because the moment you have a customer on your board, so we uh, we try to get feedback from customers. But that's never, it's very formal. In India, it's very difficult to get objective feedback. Managers struggle to do performance appraisal for their team because we are not good at giving feedback. Right? Similarly, if you come and ask anybody, if any company comes and asks you, what is the experience with this product, people tend to always say the right things. Ah, oh, it's fine. A few hiccups here and there, but it's overall fine. They never tell you the truth. But if you have customers who are in your advisory board, 
you will get the true feedback about what customers feel. Because now they have a different role to play there. Of course, the, the, the side benefit of that is that your customers become more loyal to you because sometimes they feel that they are running the company for you. So get a customer advisory board, or just a meeting of all your customers and say, tell us what we can do better. Key customers, maybe five, six or seven of them. And again, you see, these are things which don't cost any money. Okay, building a, you know, a strategic PR program. People feel PR is an expensive activity. It, you know, yes, to a certain extent there are the investments which are called for. But once today with the advent of the online media and the social media, you can run a PR program at virtually no cost. Yes, it is very expensive on one front, which is that you will have to invest your time, which I know is at a premium. But if we can have the discipline, this is not going to be a, a, a difficult task anymore. Okay, I think I will skip a few of this. Uh, positive time, I will have post this on the website. I think the only uh, other thing I want to share was start early and really early. Because when you are in the process of brand building, this can't start, as I said, you know, five years down the line. Because it becomes very difficult to do things. You've already got messages into the market. You can't change them. So it becomes that much more difficult. So when you want to mentor that person have to start, on day zero is ideal. The last thing I say, I ask this question, is what's common between brands and no? Both of them were not built in a day. Both of any branding activity. So that's all I had to share. And uh, I just, again, I will not go with so many show of hands, but how many of you felt that the things that we discussed here are something that you can do? At least a few of them, not all of them. That's that's part of that. That's part of that person.